We're going to start with the dramatic news this week, the collapse of the establishment's counter-revolution against the populist revolt that put Donald Trump in the White House. In 2016, they thought a Trump presidency was unthinkable. They hated him personally. They hated his ideas. He was against the entire agenda they stood for. Globalism, open borders, endless war. Instead, he promised to put America first. As we've said here many times, a new conservative populism, pro-business on tax and regulation, pro-worker on trade and immigration. It threatened their power, their livelihoods, their worldview. So they plotted and schemed to stop him before the election, after the election. They mobilized the legal establishment, the media establishment, the intelligence establishment, the law enforcement establishment, the political establishment, all in pursuit of their attempted coup. And that's what it was, a non-violent, non-military coup. That word makes you think of tin pot regimes in banana republics and ludicrously, that very term has been applied by the anti-Trump cult to Attorney General Barr, who's shown himself to be a leader of rare principle and courage. But the establishment's counter-revolution was much more sinister and frightening than something resembling a banana republic. It was the cold, authoritarian behavior of a police state. Yes, the kind of thing you might expect in Putin's Russia. These people who never stop lecturing the rest of us about democracy and the rule of law. These are the people guilty on the exact same charges they've leveled at the president all these years, subverting an election, undermining our institutions, abusing the law for political ends, framing innocent people for crimes they didn't commit. Schiff, Comey, Mueller, and all the rest of the rotten corrupt crew, all their craven, fawning apologists on establishment state TV, trashing the Constitution, trashing the law, trashing democracy. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Now let's have some accountability. Please help us share this message by following us at Steve Hilton X and at Next Rev FNC here to discuss the latest revelations and all the implications. Fox News contributor and former chief assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, Andrew McCarthy. Fox News contributor Sarah Carter, Fox News analyst and Fox Nation host Lawrence Jones, and Wall Street Journal columnist and Fox News contributor Kim Strassel. What a lineup of experts to get into this important topic. Andrew, I want to start with you. Um, you've been all over this story, just as Sarah and Kim have. Um, before we get into some of the details, I'd love you to just, if you could, take us right back to the beginning. Tell the story of how we got here and why. Steve, I think the best way to look at this is what the FBI and the Obama administration wanted to do here was really audacious, if you think about it in, in terms of the idea of trying to continue an investigation after a new president has come into power and is in a position to shut down the investigation when the president ultimately is the target of the investigation. And I think what happened specifically with General Flynn is that while the president brought in a lot of people into his uh, original administration who had various types of expertise, um, he was kind of short on people with a lot of national security and, and foreign relations background. General Flynn was an exception. He was a savvy intelligence operator. He had been the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency. He knew how the FBI worked in conjunction with the uh, intelligence community. And it is inconceivable to me if you wanted to continue an investigation of the president during the president's administration that they could have pulled that off with a, a sophisticated intelligence actor being the national security advisor and being loyal to the president. He would necessarily have found out that they had investigated the Trump campaign. He would necessarily have found out, for example, that they were in the FISA court conducting surveillance mm -hmm. on uh, Trump campaign advisors. And he would have been able to figure out pretty easily that President Trump was the ultimate quarry that they had in connection with the investigation. So I think in terms of him and looking specifically at Flynn's case, it's better to look at him as kind of uh, something that was obstructing the Bureau rather than their objective in the investigation. They needed to remove him if they wanted to continue uh, this particular investigation. 
I think that's just such a key insight to what was going on here. But there's a follow-up question I've got, which is, if if that's the case, if the, if the aim was just to stop Flynn from stopping their real goal, which is to take down the president through the Russia investigation, really that was achieved when Michael Flynn was fired very in the very early days of the administration. So why then, when you have Mueller uh, coming around, why did they keep going after Flynn? Well, I, I think two things happened. First. Flynn wasn't the only guy they needed to sideline. The attorney general was also in a position to know what was going on, and he was sidelined shortly after that. But I think what happened, Steve, is that in May, when, uh, Dep when uh, the FBI director Comey was fired, by that point in time, they know that there's no collusion case. And I think at that moment, it actually became an obstruction case against President Trump. In fact, we know after Comey was fired that, the, that his successor, the deputy FBI director McCabe, actually opened a criminal obstruction investigation against the president on the absurd theory that firing the FBI director was somehow obstruction. Mm -hmm. And I think this became principally an obstruction investigation from that point. And getting Flynn, once Mueller was in place, getting Flynn to plead out to misleading the FBI agents, while that would ordinarily make him a bad witness in most cases, in an obstruction case, when the whole objective is to subvert the judicial process, it's probably not so bad to have a witness, if you can squeeze the witness for, uh, for information, yep. to have a witness who, who pleads guilty to subverting the process.